Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to an ESPN boxing special where we will be privileged to take a look back at one of the best heavyweight championship fights probably in the last decade. And these two gentlemen here in the studio with me, they were the combatants. Uh, Hovander Holyfield, last November, putting his unified heavyweight title on the line against the top contender, Riddick Bowe. And we're happy to have these two gentlemen with us as we prepare to take a look back at their epic battle in the Thomas and Mack Center on November 13th of last year. Gentlemen, it's a delight to have you with us. And uh, it's good to get a chance to take a peek back and maybe pick your brains a little bit as our viewers get a chance to see the fight. Evander, you were defending your, your crown. It was your fourth title defense. Did you sense going in that this was going to be the toughest defense you had? Well, I, I knew the all fight would be tough, but um, I guess fighting Bo, I knew he was young, and I knew that when a guy never fought for a title, he would be a little bit more hungry than the guys that already had been there. So I did expect a tough fight. Rick, as you were coming into uh, uh, Thomas and Mack, as you were getting ready for that evening, how sure were you that you were going to walk out as heavyweight champ? Well, I ensured myself uh, by being in great shape. I knew that uh, facing a guy such as Evander, I had to be in the best shape I could be because, as you know, Evander's a great warrior, and he comes in shape every fight. Respect uh, by both these men toward the other, and why not? You'll see why as we go back to November 13th of last year in the Thomas and Mack Center. Len Berman and I were at ringside. Let's watch Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bowe. Well, welcome back here in the studio where I am uh, joined again by Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bowe as we now head into the middle portion of their championship match, a match which was taking on some surprising twists and turns, actually. And uh, Riddick, were you a little bit surprised that Evander Holyfield was standing in and slugging with you as much as he was? Everyone was talking about the fact that he was going to use a lot of movement early in the fight. See, one thing about it, well, one thing a lot of people don't know is he Evander is a fighter. And um, I think if you hit Evander, Evander's going to fight. And um, so I wasn't surprised at all. Um, I was big or strong. I think Evander felt like, you know, uh, he can get me early or he can get me late. So he was willing to fight. Were you happy with that strategy, though, that he did that? Either way, if I had to yeah. box Evander or fight Evander, I was going to win. Evander, it seemed to me uh, throughout the fight that, especially those early moments, that you got kind of enamored with your left hook, which you landed sometimes. And probably if there's one punch that people tend to land against Riddick, it's the left hook although it doesn't do that much damage always to him. Did you get a little too left hook happy in the early rounds, do you think? Well, no, I, uh, that's a shot that I could hit him in with the most, and I felt that uh, the position that I was in, it was hard to hit him with the right hand. And so um, I was working the double left hook to the body, to the head. And uh, Riddick, at this point in the fight, did you feel like you were gaining control? Uh, pretty much. I felt like Ivana started going the other way. Uh, I felt like I was getting strong and that my conditioning was uh, uh, making me feel better and what have you. And the fight was going more my way than it was his. Yeah, I was starting to. You were, um, it seemed to me that you were, uh, about the second round, after the first round in which you were really boxing him more, was when you got into slugging a little bit. Why did that happen? Why do you think you slipped into that? Well, after the first round, I was boxing and I was showing su superior speed and, you know, I was using the ring very well. Uh, right at, uh, in the second round, the first half, I was boxing, then we clinched. And I uh, asked the referee to break. He hit me with a shot on the break. And it kind of just made me mad, and it kind of changed my whole game plan. Hmm. And, you know, I, you know, I thought about, well, I'm going to fight him. And, you know, and I, I went toe-to-toe. -to -toe and I, in my head, I figured hey, either two things going to happen. Either I'm going to knock him out, or either he's going to run out of gas, uh, either the third, it's it going to come down to a decision. It's come down to a decision. I'm going to win. Well, those were some of the choices. Now let's take a look at what did happen. We go back to round six of Andrew Holyfield and Riddick Bowe. Well, I said it then, and I'll repeat it again. Yes, it was one of the great rounds in heavyweight history. And these are the two men that created it. And uh, it was an extraordinary 10th round. And uh, Evander, in that 10th round, I'm, I'm wondering if there were moments in that round where you thought you weren't going to get through. And also, did you feel like Riddick had punched himself out? Well, what actually happened, you going into the 10th round, you know, I had a, a nice ninth round. And so when I went in the 10th round, I went in there to buy time, mm. and I found myself buying time, and it hit me with an uppercut I didn't even see, mm. which I knew I was hurt that shot, and, you know, I always knew that the shot that actually hit you the first time is not the one that take you out, it's the next shot. 
I got away from that shot, and from that point on, he threw a lot of punches, which would hit me off the shoulder. He never was able to get me, hit me with a clean shot, but even though his strength, he was knocking me all over the ring. I kind of have a feeling that eventually he gonna realize that he's not hurting me, then he gonna, uh, he gonna slow down the punch and I'm gonna be able to come back. That kind of happened in that round, because at the end he did hit you with some pretty good, were you tired toward the end of that round? Very much so. Yeah, I guess, why not? <laughs> I, uh, you know, I feel like I can take Ivan at that point, but again, he has a great heart and he has a lot of determination, and uh, I think he had a lot to prove. And and, that's, and in that round, he showed the, the heart of a, a champion. Did you feel Riddick? Because you guys both are, are real good students of boxing and articulate guys, and you have a great thought processes when it comes to evaluating boxing. Did you really feel something special was going on in that tenth round? I mean, granted, you were trying to both you know get through it, but did you feel like you guys were creating something special? Not really. I think we just wanted to win. We was in a, a fight, and uh, actually, I didn't know that temp round was that great until really? I had the opportunity to, to see the fight again. And right after the fight, a lot of people said, wow, that was a great temp <laughs> round. But, you know, I really didn't pay it any attention. Evander, at that point, did you, and of course, there were some bad moments still to come in this bout. When you came back at the end of the tent, though, did you think maybe you had momentum swinging back toward you? Well, well, well definitely. I, I felt that I finally got him, got him in a position throughout the whole, the whole fight, in a position where that I can see where he started wearing down, and because you know I'm thinking back at the time when, when Bo and I was sparring partner, and he was always stronger, but somehow fatigue was set in, set in, with him faster than me, and I, and that would give me an advantage to make it even, and so you know at that tenth round, the last part, I just got him where he was bagging back, and I can get my punches off. Well, as you will see in the 11th round, though, it didn't quite work out the way Evander hoped it would. Let's go to round 11. Well, the decision went to Riddick Bowe. He won the championship in his first try, and Evander Holyfield lost it in his fourth title defense. It was a fantastic match. It did go to the decision, which not everybody thought it would. And Riddick, when the fight went the distance, were you pretty confident that you'd won it? Almost oh, definitely. I thought by the, uh, the knockdown 11th round, that pretty much secured it. Uh, but again, you can't take nothing away from Ivana. He has a heart of a line. You know, Ali had his Joe Frazier and his Ken Norton. This is my Joe Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> well, he would hope that at least he'll get one of these nods along the way if he's Joe Frazier. You expressed some doubt later that uh, that you lost that fight. Do you still feel that way? Well, you know, no. Um, you know, after the fight, you know, I was still disappointed because he was standing. And I felt that I was going to not bow out. Did you really I, feel that like going in? Yes, I, I felt that at some point in time is that that I was going to catch him with a left hook and I was going to get him out of there. I, I never gave up on, on this. I, I felt that it don't need to go to a decision, but I want to get him out of there. But because the, uh, the fight was so competitive that, you know, he, he showed me something that I didn't think he was able to, able to show me. Bogue used to always run out of gas, and I just knew he going to run out of stamina and I was going to hit him with that left hook. When the bell rung in the 12th round, I was just, oh, man, I can't believe it. Mm. Now, you, unre you retired after the fight, but then you unretired, and you're going to be fighting Alex Stewart in a couple nights on a pay-per-view match. Um, I know you want to get back in the ring against Riddick, but what would you do differently? How would, uh, I mean, not to give away any state secrets, but how could you turn things around? I just have to fight a smarter fight. You know, I, you know, I can't look at Bo as that young guy that I was sparring with and expecting him to run out of gas. You know, I have to do more things. I don't feel that I gave him a big target. I gave him more of a target. I didn't move around. If I would at least stuck to the game plan four or five rounds, maybe I could have tucked him inside sometime and switched it up, but he was able to pull me into that dog fight, and I think my ego got so big that I wanted to prove to him that, you know, I don't care what your size is, that I'm not going in way. Riddick, is there any way that Evander could do anything different against you in the next time? Perhaps he can do something different, but I think um, any time you match a good big man against a good little man, and I'm going to fight him regardless. You know, I think Evander will always bring the best out in me, but I think the outcome will always be the same. Will we see you guys in the ring, you think? I, I, I hope so. You know, I think Evander deserves a shot, and uh, like I said, you know, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Vander, good luck to you in your match with Alex Stewart, uh, which uh, may lead to a match with Liverpool Riddick. Why is that as a cab? I'm rooting for you. <laughs> I'll bet you well, are. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to know one thing. <laughs> if you're Ali and you're Joe Frazier, do I have to be Howard Cosell? 
Perhaps, but this, this is going to be a thriller, but it won't be in my name. Okay, thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this showing of the Evander Holyfield Riddick Bow Fight. They're gracious to be with us. It was a terrific fight, and we were glad to look back on it. Stay with us and enjoy Top Rank Boxing next.